So I was about to replace a bunch of machine heads, or tuners on the top of the ukuleles over here. And then I thought that some of you guys might actually like to join me and see how it's done. On this uke, I'm going to swap out these for these. Now I could pretend it's for smoothness of turning or tuning stability or something like that, but that would be a lie. Basically, I think that these ones are better looking, so it's purely for aesthetic reasons in this case. However, lots of ukuleles ship with some pretty terrible uh, machine heads, and this is one a relatively inexpensive fix. And it's not too hard either, as long as you do it right. I'm also going to give you a guide to the most common types of string tensioning systems. Um, before you go ordering parts or drilling holes, make sure that the parts on your uke match exactly the parts that you're ordering otherwise you're going to be drilling and possibly repairing so a lot of the work is actually contained in the research of the parts before you buy them so the big question to ask yourself before you order the parts is are the screw holes in the same place because that can vary a lot if not that's going to require some drilling of new holes. Now, not everybody cares about that because it's on the back of the uke, it's on the back of the headstock. I personally would care about it. The easiest solution would be to only buy parts that match the current holes. But you can drill new holes. And if you're picky like me and you're drilling new holes, you could also fill in the old ones. But that sounds like a lot of work. Um, I would try to avoid that if possible. You can avoid that by buying parts that are in the same family of parts as the ones that you're replacing. And if you've no idea what that would look like, then watch the rest of the video because I'm going to walk you through it. Now this isn't going to be an exhaustive list of every kind of tuning system, but I'm just going to walk you through the most common ones and the ones that I have lying around on my various ukes. And hopefully that'll give you an idea of the kind of thing to look out for. I would break it down into three categories. And within those categories, there are some subcategories, but the main three different kinds are geared tuners, friction tuners, and planetary tuners. So within geared tuners, I'd break that down into open backed and closed backed. And these ones are based on a ratio system. So what I mean by that is one turn of the tuning head doesn't mean one turn of the capstan. They're on a ratio. So the most common ratio that you'll find will be 14 to one. You can find ones that are different ratios, but they're very uncommon. The most common ones are 14 to one and you can count the ratio. You can figure it out by looking at the back of an open geared tuner and counting the number of teeth on the cog. If there are 14 teeth on the cog, then it's a 14 to 1 ratio. And that means it would take 14 turns of the button in order to turn the capstan one whole circle around. In case you're wondering, the capstan is the part that sticks up where the string goes through. The second system I mentioned was tension pegs or friction tuners. These would basically be the, the first ones that were ever on ukuleles were, it was basically a peg, like a cone shaped peg, like you would see on a violin. And the string would be wrapped around and hammered into the headstock and then you could turn it to tune it. Now, because there are no gears operating in a peg system, it's literally one to one ratio. It's like, it's like a glorified stick. <laughs> so if you turn it that much, that's how much it turns. And there are some pros and cons to this. Um, the pros would be that it looks like a very traditional ukulele. It's got that vintage look, um, if that's something you like. The downsides are, I would argue, much more serious. And that's that they are way too sensitive for most people. So if you even breathe on these, the, the pitch just fires up. It's a, 
incredibly sensitive and quite difficult to tune. In my opinion, they're also more unstable with tuning. So they tend to go out of tune a little bit more. Um, and for me, that drawback is kind of usually not worth the look. The other one I mentioned was friction tuners. Now friction tuners are more or less the same kind of thing. They're like a modern, sort of a modernish looking equivalent. So you can see it's a button like there is on other machine heads, but you can see it comes straight out the back. They're quite a simple design in that this screw is how you tension it. So if it got a little loose, which it does, they actually require a little bit of maintenance. You gotta tighten them every couple of months. If it got loose, it would just basically let go of the string and go boo. In which case you would take a screwdriver, Phillips head, and you would tighten it. And that screw kind of presses the whole unit into the back of the headstock. And that's what gives it its tension. And then it's just that one to one ratio. Um, so these have the same kind of sensitivity issue as the pegs. So yeah, not for the faint of heart. The third one I mentioned were planetary tuners. And planetary tuners, they're quite popular with the crowd um, who are into the vintage instruments because they have the similar shape and design to pegs and friction heads, as in they stick out the back, they don't come out the sides. Um, but they kind of get around most of the issues of the pegs uh, in that there is actually a gear built into them. I would argue that they're basically a part kind of borrowed or inspired by banjo tuning heads. Um, banjo tuning heads like this. So you could see how that would fit into the back of it like that. And there is a gear in that little section there. Now it's a, whoa, it's a four to one ratio. So that means four turns for one rotation of the capstan. Um, and that seems to be a nice middle ground. A lot of people like them. The problem with the banjo ones is that they're incredibly heavy, but some manufacturers have begun to make ones that are quite light. And um, they tend to cost a bit of a premium though. So again, not for the faint of heart. On geared tuners, there are both open-backed and closed-backed. Um, open-backed ones are the ones where you can see the cog, and closed-back ones are ones where you cannot see the cog. So open-backed and closed-backed. Now they work the same way, they're both geared tuners, and they both have that fishtail, which I quite like. Nothing too fancy, they're just generic ones. Some unusual designs that you might encounter within the back facing machine head design include uh, slotted headstocks. Now these ones, they borrow from classical guitar design. See how there's two channels routed out and they're mounted on the side. The capstan goes through the headstock and these particular ones are back facing like that, similar to a classical guitar. Another one that you might encounter would be the tuning heads on a U-Bass. Now for the most part these are similar to those found on a bass guitar. You might recognize them, open-backed. Ge and they're geared to a much higher ratio for more subtle tuning because it makes a difference on a bass. But if you look at the cap stands up here at the top, they're massively oversized compared to those on a bass guitar. And this is what they look like on a bass guitar. So, so far on all the ukuleles that we've looked at, there was two on the left and two on the right, meaning that the parts have to be mirrored. So if you were ordering machine heads for something like this, you would order two for the left and two for the right. Well, actually this would be left, this would be right. However, not all ukes are designed that way. If you've seen, the, in the last couple of years, Fender have brought out some ukes, and some of those are modeled after Telecasters. Um, and Telecasters have all of their machine heads 
in a straight row. This means that all of the hardware has to be the same. So it's not left right, they would all be left. So on a uke, that would be four left facing machine heads that you would have to order. Now this one's a guitar, but it gives you the right idea. So see the way on the Telecaster, they're all in a row. Well, the ukes that are based on the Telecaster design would basically be like that. Some of the manufacturers have begun to make smaller, lighter, low profile machine heads as well. I don't have any of them here, but you can look them up uh, if you're curious about them. So where to look? On a small budget, you can get generic ones on sites like AliExpress or Banggood or eBay. With a decent budget, you can look at Goto, um, Grover or Waverly. And there are also boutique machine head builders for extra special projects. And those obviously cost an arm and a leg. Or well, not all of them, but most of them cost quite a bit. They would be for custom builds and stuff like that. Very, If you have a very fancy project, but the work is beautiful. Oh yeah, I promised to show you the installation. Um, so here you go. And if you've done your homework and ordered the right kind of parts, then it's a relatively straightforward procedure. If this all seems a little bit too ambitious for you, you can actually kind of cheat. You can leave most of the machine head there already and you can just install button replacements. So instead of the entire machine head, instead of replacing the whole thing, you can just replace this part here. You would just use those parts. Ta -da. And that one is pretty much as simple as unscrewing the screw, <laughs> putting the new one in with the little runner and screwing it back on. So even the most timid DIY person can probably give that one a try. And if you do any mods like this, please, you can send me pictures, like I'd love to see your work. So thank you for joining me down the weird and wonderful rabbit hole of geared machine heads, planetary tuners and friction tuners. Uh, I hope you found it entertaining or informative or ideally both. If you're in the Dublin area and you have a uke that needs some upgrading, I do ukulele modifications and repairs. Please do get in touch. And lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons for making this possible. Without their support, I wouldn't be able to make this kind of educational content available for free to the public. So thank them. If you enjoyed this video, and would like more videos like it, then please don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, you know, you know the drill, all that stuff. And if you have any questions or comments, please do post them below. I'll get back to them and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys. Bye bye.